Clifford O. Clifford. It's a concept type movie where you have a, it has a comedian, so I mean right there they're building a movie around the comedian, in this case Martin Short. Yes, I think he I think he was fairly popular around this time with Saturday Night Live, yeah. SCTV, Three Amigos. Pure luck. I don't know if that one did well in the theaters, but he, he was starring in movies at this time. The concept is he's a 10 year old boy. Martin Short is playing a 10 year old boy, and he's a mischievous Dennis the Menace type kid who goes around causing trouble. Charles Grodin is his. His well, uncle. His uncle, yeah. On the cover, you would think it'd be his dad with Mary Steenburgen as his mom, but they're actually aunt and uncle. Yes. And. The concept being that his parents are so sick of him that they just want to get rid of him. So they send him to go live temporarily with his aunt and uncle, and he proceeds to make life a living hell for his uncle. But of course, whenever the aunt is around, he's, you know, the most charming, innocent young lad, and whenever anyone else is around, he puts on this facade of being the perfect little boy, and only Charles Grodin knows what a little hellion he actually is. So, Dennis the Menace, essentially. Ex yes, except with a 40-year-old man playing the boy. I can't take you right now! Turn back, Uncle Martin! The freeway the dinosaur only's got the hair! No, you're gonna make us worse! That's so big! Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm almost shocked to say I actually kind of enjoyed this. Well, I, I, I will agree with you that it wasn't as bad as what I had heard previously. And I've even read that it's sort of, this movie is sort of starting to accumulate a cult following in more recent years. That it was sort of this very odd, sort of dark, conceptual, comedic idea. Sort of in the vein of SCTV. And this was actually directed by one of the writers for SCTV. But while it wasn't as bad as I had heard, I still, my main reaction was just kind of one of severe confusion. I didn't really understand like who this, who this movie was trying to appeal to, to kids or to adults or to both, because it doesn't really work on either side of that. But in a weird way, that's kind of why I liked it though, because it doesn't it doesn't play down to its audience enough to where traditional kids movies would. It's not like Dennis the Menace because that movie is it plays to Wild six year old slapstick. It's the yeah. John Hughes style of people <laughs> slipping and <laughs> yeah, falling, getting and, hit in the balls. Oh, I hurt my bottom, that kind of thing. It doesn't it's really dark and it that's what makes it feel like it's playing more for adults, but then again, it's so silly and over the top. Yeah, but and there's also other stuff that I think maybe is probably due to studio interference, saying like, we need to clarify this thing, we need to add like a moral, we need to make it appeal to kids more, and so that's where I think you get stuff like the futuristic framing device, which takes place, I don't remember when it's supposed to be, but it's like in the 2030s or the 2020s, and Martin Short is an, he's Clifford as an old man in this like futuristic orphanage. And this is how the movie starts. Yes, it opens in the future. <laughs> with, with kids on hoverboards. And, like... <laughs> and I guess it's basically supposed to be about him learning a lesson about not being such a shit. <laughs> that, that's why it compromised, and I don't like that yes, it compromised, because it did, yeah. if you strip that framing device, yeah. it's really... You could have been more uncompromising with it. That, that would have felt like it was truer to the spirit of what the idea was. Stefan, do you like Uncle Martin? <laughs> so do I. This is Martin Daniels. I've got a bomb. I'm his Davis fiance! Martin? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We are police officers. Don't be alarmed. This gentleman is suspected of planting an explosive device. What? This movie could have easily been made with Macaulay Culkin, I think. Because he would have been the right, the right age. Y yeah. And if they had done that, I feel like they would have tried to cuten him up a bit. Like having, okay, yeah, I see what Yeah, you're like, I, I don't think they would have gone as ballsy as they did with okay, making him, like... making him as unlikable as yeah, he is. Yeah, like a literal spawn of Satan in this movie. They wouldn't yeah. have done that if they have gotten a kid actor. But, plus, plus, it also allows Charles Grodin to basically abuse Martin Short yes, throughout the whole thing. Yes, 
And I'll admit, like, those are some really funny scenes. Like, Charles Grodin is well cast, and he he's actually, great. And he I actually is very funny. fantastic in this movie, yeah, actually. Yeah, and his, his character, the way he slowly unravels throughout the thing and gradually just grows to hate Clifford more and more and just treat him more and more abusively and Cause there, there are all kinds of scenes like yeah where he's just full-on physically abusing Martin Short mm -hmm. and that would never work if you had an actual kid there exactly I underestimated the evil one oh Clifford what shall we do whatever shall we do Clifford has these dinosaur toys and he's obsessed with dinosaurs. Oh right, and that's basically his M.O. throughout the whole thing is he wants to go to this amusement park, but Charles Grodin doesn't have the time to take him. Yeah. So then, yeah, of course the big finale takes place in the amusement park. Yes. And Charles Grodin basically makes it his mission to turn this amusement park into a nightmare for him. Basically use it to torture him. Yes, yes. <laughs> By about the halfway point, I think I was sort of starting to get into it, and by the last third, like, yeah, we were laughing pretty consistently at some of the stuff, especially Charles Grodin's reactions and his his way of playing a man that has just been totally pushed to the edge psychologically. Um, but then, yeah, by the end, I was just kind of like, huh, I'm not quite sure what I thought of that. Um, it, it left me very perturbed, I must say. On that note, I kind of want to explore the physical packaging of the tape itself because I think that's a good example of how... Oh, we didn't even read anything. We were supposed to read, like, the plot synopsis. Well, I'm kind of glad we saved it for last because okay. um, we we talk about a big point in, this, in our discussion of this film is I, I feel like it was mismarketed. Like adding and, to the confusion, yes. Exactly, yeah. And uh, if you could tell with this tape, they didn't know what to do with it, really. Right. I mean, the fact that it's called Clifford, what's the first thing that you think of when you hear the title Clifford? Well, here's a tape to take full advantage of that. <laughs> so you got Martin Short, you got Charles Gordon, Mary Steenberg, and, and then a doghouse. A prominently placed doghouse, dog dish, Clifford holding a leash. So is this movie about a boy and his... And his big red dog? No, not at all. But not in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. I think they had the exact same mindset you did. They watched it, they're like, what do we do with this? <laughs> it's funny, but what do we do with this? Well, Clifford the Big Red Dog is on TV. It's kids yeah. love that. But the, I guess they made the decision. Let's try and market this to kids. Let's trick people. <laughs> 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 yeah. Also, one thing that that I think is interesting to note is this is apparently one of Nicolas Cage's favorite films. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I read Martin Short's autobiography, I must say, and he talks a bit about the making of Clifford, and uh, he also mentions the fact that, yeah, it wasn't really marketed very well, not many people really understood what they were going for, he felt it was something in the spirit of the SCTV kind of alternative humor, but he also feels that, you know, it's it's got a bit of a cult following, people are starting to discover it again and really respond to it. And he mentions an occasion where he ran into Nicolas Cage on a flight somewhere, I forget where, and uh, he was a big fan of Nick Cage's work and was like, oh, I wonder if I should go say something to him. Before he even could, Nick Cage came to him and basically said, like, I just wanted to say, I loved Clifford. I wore out my VHS tape watching the dinner scene with you and Charles Grodin over and over and over again. If Martin, Sh if Martin Short ever has a retrospective, like a resurgence and that people are rediscovering his work, I think this is a good one to go back to. Because Martin Short is pretty good in it. Also, I could say the same for Charles Grodin. If I'd say if there's any reason to watch it maybe for Charles Grodin's performance. I think it does have some very strong comic moments in it. Um, but I don't know. My, my, my confusion remains after watching the movie. I'm not sure who it would really appeal to. Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, if you're Nicolas Cage, check this movie out. Are you listening to me? Are you?